Azur Promelia. Azur Promelia. Wuthering Waves. Solo leveling a rise. Wuthering Waves. Dude, if Fate got a gacha game similar to a lot of the other ones being released now, like not like a pixel take your turn gacha game like FGO, but like if they got like a gacha game that was similar to like, let's say Genshin, that would probably be the highest grossing game. Like I cannot imagine any game is pulling in more money than Fate as that. Did everyone at the same time say we're making an open world like gotcha game with anime characters all at the same time. We're all looking for the next big gotcha game and a lot of incredible gotcha games are coming. Wuthering Waves, Azure Promelia, Zenless Zone Zero, Bark Knight's Enfield, Duet Night Abyss. But what is the most anticipated gotcha game of 2024? I have my own personal favorite, just like I'm sure you do. But I thought, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead here and pull in five friends of mine Mtash, Braxophone, Ruby, Vulcan, and Hyun to provide a, a little bit of variety. That way, you're not just hearing from me, a singular biased opinion. These are all well-known, talented, knowledgeable creators that I strongly urge you go ahead and check out if you don't already watch them. If I had to pick a single gacha game that I am anticipating more than any other, it would have to be Azure Promelia. After seeing the release trailer for it, I could not be any more excited. It looks absolutely beautiful aesthetically. It has some great looking action combat, tons of incredible looking waifus, creature collection, and a type of casual content that hasn't really been done before in the gacha genre, and that is in the form of a type of farming system where you can technically put your little, for lack of a better word, pals, to work just like you would in Pal World. Pal World really went a ways to show us what a little bit of passion and innovation can do. And it is great to see other studios taking a few risks and delivering us something unique and exciting. Now, I'm also very excited for every single gacha I mentioned in the intro, just not to the same extent. And that is because Azure Promelia offers a diverse selection of content that isn't just explore a large world and grind gear that most gacha games since the release of Genshin seem to prioritize. But let's go ahead here and see what everyone else has to say. So I think the things that I'm most excited about in the gacha space, uh, probably one of them is Wuthering Waves and, and the other one would probably be Azur Promelia. So Azur Promelia, at least, I feel like that game came out of nowhere. Like I had no idea that game was even being made, being developed at all. Um, I did hear, you know, whispers of another Azure game, but like, I don't play the original Azure lane, so I don't, I'm not paying attention to it, right? That game comes out and it looks like you take Genshin Impact with Azure character designs, and then you add like kind of power world or like creature capture mechanics to it. You add some mint picking activities, some like really, really nice, like casual stuff to it. But then you also have really cool combat that seems a little bit more complex and like, let's say Genshin Impact, for example. And I'm like so hyped for that game. I feel like that game, considering the budget that Azure Lane and, and that the company that made Azure Lane has, um, they are probably going to make this game that just absolutely blows everyone out of the water. I, I'm so excited for that. And Wuthering Waves is just around the corner too. Um, that one I'm really excited about because I really like the parry system. I don't know if, if you play Souls-like stuff, but um, I, I really like that you can just kind of sit there. If you wanted to, you could just sit there and talk to Chad on stream or something and just parry a boss for like 50 years. And, and like that could be that could be cool. But um, I really like the, the idea of like free flowing combat with high skill expression. Um, I think it's going to be really sick. And the thing I'm most excited about for both of them is that bringing this up, this like really high bar and being able to actually achieve it potentially that, that Genshin had initially set. If other companies can keep doing that, we keep innovating and getting better and better open world gacha games. Uh, and it's going to be incredible. I'm personally like, I don't play gacha games because they're gacha. I play them because uh, like every anime game is a gacha game. <laughs> but um, with that said, you know, I feel like as the bar gets higher and higher, it gets more, I guess, like tolerable to play games that have gotcha mechanics because there's so many other systems that make the game enjoyable outside of the um, like pulling for rate up characters. So I, I'm really excited for Azure Promelia and for Weathering Waves. So this year, a lot of gotcha games has come out, which is like there's there's a lot of close betas from Zenless to Weathering Waves. And then suddenly a trailer drops and it's Azure Promelia. Of course, I think a lot of people right now have been really, really hyped for Azure Promelia. Considering that Azure Lane, it's the same what company from Azure Lane, right? And so immediately a lot of people are like, oh my god, waifus. Um, for the gacha game that I'm anticipating the most, I'm gonna like rate it in order. The first one would be Azure Promelia. 
followed by Withering Waves and then Zenless Zone Zero. I don't know if you've seen Sticks, but the devs had mentioned that they're not adding any male characters. <laughs> they're kind of based for doing that because they know that what they do best is making waifus, you know, making uh, making female playable characters. So the fact that their focus is not having a male character in there is kind of based. It's pretty nice that they're honest and upfront about that. It was pretty like admirable that the devs pretty much addressed that point and they were upfront about it. You know, they weren't lying or trying to hide. So yeah, uh, one thing with Azure Promilia, I think the reason why I'm excited for it is because it has that open world aspect, but they have like, I think the combat is very interesting because they show the PAL, right? I, I don't want to say like PAL world, but there are mechanics of having a companion uh, to help with you. And you can also like ride, like there's the wolf mounts, there's the dragon mount and i think pre-covid i've been looking for a game that has something that has like to do with creatures involving so like either in combat or obviously like traveling so that's what they had as well i thought that was like really cool is involving mounts uh the combat according to the demo and as a promilia they also involved oh gosh i i feel like bad for saying this but like the ecosystem in wuwa they kind of had that in as a promilia as well where you're able to use your companion in battles and switch out in between battles. Um, I don't know if you could use them to like help parry, but that was kind of cool too to see them like capture a pal, capture a mob, and then use that as like a companion so you could travel with them and everything. Kind of like Pokemon Go. So I guess the gist of it is that Azure Promilia has a lot of features that other games have, and then they literally took one from every game and combined it in Azure Promilia. So yeah, it's a it's a pretty exciting game. And then including at the very end when they made like a Harvest Moon reference with the farming. That one showed a casual side to the game that I thought was really interesting. Because you have like the combat, the exploration, and then the really casual like mini fun stuff. Which is creating your own like farm and like place for your uh, your world to make it more like immersive. Kind of like it's like your home, I guess. <laughs> they, they, they're going to make the game really immersive that way. So I, I like that a it's lot about Azure Promelia. You can say huh? it. it. It's very much like a Genshin PAL world. <laughs> yes, yes. It, I, I literally had a title if PAL world and Genshin had a kid. Um, But then the thing is, they also gathered like, of course, the Wuwa, the ecosystem. They had like a counter thing that looked really interesting. I don't know if it's like perfect parry, perfect counter, but they did have that as well. Um, And then the boss fights, they, they pretty much, in my opinion, for me at least, checked every box that i was looking for in a game when power came out i was addicted when genshin came out i was also addicted so to see a game bring those aspects and elements together makes me like really excited um i see a lot of potential in the game in terms of co-op if they allow co-op a lot of people would have fun with that uh, just exploring and like capturing and fighting mobs together so yeah i think a lot of people when we first saw as a promilia i don't know if you had the feeling but the feeling when you first played Genshin, I think a lot of people would have that again with Alice Promilia. Like that obsession, just the fun exploration, you know? Kind of like head empty, basically when things were more simpler. Hello, first off. I would say the ones I'm most excited for would be Wuthering Waves number one, just because it's like adjacent to Genshin and Honkai and, and like, I know there's so many eyes on it. Like, is it the Genshin killer? So, um, part of me hopes that it, it really does well but i also i get this feeling that it needs to cook do you know what i mean like it, it looks good there's some good stuff but to make an open world game with bosses and progression systems and all these things like there's so much that has to go right for it to be a good game and i also feel like it's one of those things that you have to play for 60 hours to be like oh no it wasn't a good game if you know what i mean like you have to upgrade the characters and like what do i do with these characters when i level them and that's a tough thing with a lot of these games is you almost have to sink a lot of time into them to even realize <laughs> if it was worth sinking time into them so i hope within ways is good I've tested out a lot of the combat and like end game combat and I like dying to the bosses and like learning their kits because I'm like a, a kind of a souls player and a, and a you know hardcore player but I don't know will the audiences like it will other people like it but for me it was a win the only thing is like I'm kind of burnt out on the world exploration like I don't I don't know there's so many of these games like there's Azure Promilia it looks cool overall like the characters look good it actually caught me by surprise I just learned about that one like maybe last week and um, it looks cool and, and you can fly around, but I'm like, do I want to explore another open world and, and find 500 chests? Like, I just, I'm not sure I want to do that. And 
and then people have showed off all these other ones like it just feels like did everyone at the same time say we're making an open world like gotcha game with anime characters all at the same time it's like every game is coming out with one there's one for like arc knights is making one and like i know they're all going to be different but my hope is just one of them is good wuthering waves is my bet now but that's only because i like the combat more than more than kind of like the the genshin impact and tower fantasy because i find that they're they're too easy so that's the only open world like gotcha game that i'm excited about but there's a game called um duet no duet Duet Abyss? Duet Night Abyss? I have not played that one, but I've heard about it and I've seen it and I've, I've heard it's kind of like Warframe. Now, here's the only issue is like some of it legit looks like, <laughs> I don't want to be the guy, but like almost like plagiarism levels of, of like copying the kits from Warframe. Uh, so I'm a little worried about that one, but at the same time, if they pull it off, um, visually i just like it more than warframe so if they if they made a comparable game if it was this like grindy game with lots of weapons and characters like i like that stuff so i think i'd be interested in that one just because it it does seem like it would lead to really good content creation as well which is always you know i'm a very business focused guy so like i always think about like does this have the potential for content um but then um just for just for me i'm not a gotcha gamer if i'm being 100 percent honest i i i play a couple like I, i'm playing afk journey right now and i actually made a second channel but that's also a business but i like it like it's it's fine it's chill i don't have to put a lot of time into it but i am someone that likes um progression and loot and gear and so my want and my hope and my most anticipated game i'm not sure it'll ever get made i want i want against impact but I don't get limited by resin and, and energy. I want Wuthering Waves, but I don't have to wait a week to get that material to upgrade the character to test them. I, I just want to, you know, essentially Final Fantasy, um, you know, just build all my teams and, and do all that stuff, but not um, time-gated, uh, like, like a gotcha game. You know what I mean? I love team building. I love finding out different combos. Um, but the frustrating thing for me with all these games is just waiting and, and just knowing what I want to build, but also knowing it's going to take me a week and a half to do it because I can only do it a little bit today, a little bit tomorrow and the next day. And so, I don't know. Honestly, I'm kind of in this point where I feel like I'm kind of burning out on gotcha games a little bit and I want someone to surprise me. That is like my biggest hope. That's my biggest prayer is someone comes out with something different and maybe it's that duet night abyss and they change the model up, but I don't have a ton of faith. I, I know... The model works there. These companies are making money. That's why everyone is trying to to compete in the market. But I just want them to have a player first um, kind of mentality. If you look at something like Path of Exile, I've spent money in Path of Exile because I feel dirty not giving them money because I've played so many hours. I, I, I've played so many leagues, so many seasons that I'm like, I need to give them money. I want to give them money to pay them back for all the fun that I've had. And I would love for a, one of these gotcha games to do that, where they come out and they're like, here's our amazing game, play it, it's free, enjoy. And then at the end of it, I'm like, here's a hundred dollars because I had a banger time. But I just don't know if that's uh, if that's actually the cards, but um, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Yeah, so I think my most anticipated game for 2024 would be Solo Leveling Arise, which may come as a like a left field one because we have like things like Wuthering Waves, Endless Zone Zero, all those games coming, which I am looking forward to those. But after playing the beta of Solo Leveling Arise, probably combined with the fact that I've read the manhua and like the anime is going on right now, so it's like mega hype stations, the game in the way that it goes through the actual story of the, like and i'm not normally a story person like i don't get deep into story but because i know the story that's normally going to make me not want to watch, like watch the story in a game but because it's a new way to view the story where it's 3d animated slash animated storyboard and all that it is really enjoyable plus the combat is really solid it has auto features which i personally enjoy to limit the daily grind and it's just one of those ones where you don't have a bunch of like the open world thing is fantastic but as i play more open world games for me personally i realize i just want to be able to go in and do the stuff that i want to do and then be able to walk away 
And that's what this one sort of does. So the beta of it is going really well. It's got a few optimization issues and stuff like that, but that is probably the number one that I am looking forward to the most, along with things like Wuthering Waves. Like I said, Zenless Zone Zero, they're all games that we're all gonna jump into and check out anyway, because they, they, they're pretty hype. They look good. The Wuthering Waves beta was fantastic. Um, Zenless definitely needs to improve on the TV system and stuff like that for me to want to play it. But the combat, when you finally got to it, did feel fun. The other one on top of that, which has already already released but I'm thoroughly enjoying is AFK Journey because I'm a big idle game player. I just think, I think it's actually from people that I'm speaking to who have maybe done sponsorships or just never played idle games before and they're like, oh, I'm actually enjoying this. I think it's sort of showing people that idle game progression is kind of fun where every stage you're trying to get through is a challenge and you feel achievement when you beat that. Whereas a lot of other games where you get to an end game and then everything becomes easy, you don't get that feeling. So two, two top games for this year, honestly, solo leveling and AFK Journey with all those other big ones that I'm sure other people have mentioned definitely right up there yeah i guess i'm i'm very excited for uh weathering waves uh as my number one i don't i'm not some kind of like gotcha pro but when i was trying it out uh i really really enjoyed it i kind of liked how it actually utilized like the gameplay wise it actually was utilizing um dodging as something that was a key core part of actually like playing the game um because i'm not much of i'm a mobile gamer but i'm not much of playing on mobile i prefer the pc ports above anything else like i play nikkei on pc i play Starrail on pc you know and so using using a mouse and keyboard um is obviously easier i think for weathering waves at least for me and honestly like i haven't really been watching or learning about anything about weathering waves like outside of my own gaming due to just time this year um so far um surprisingly uh, I actually had no idea what Weathering Waves was until fairly recently, within the last like six, seven, eight months. So I went into it not knowing what it was. I think someone, all I knew was that like someone told me that it was like gonna be a lot more difficult than like um, mint picking Genshin um, because, uh, you know, on the flip side is that Genshin, you know, you have characters that you don't really need to dodge for um and there's no uh if you dodge correctly there's really no like benefit to dodging and the dodging was a huge thing that people were like telling me that they were like oh you gotta be careful you gotta be careful and i was kind of nervous because i have i had freshly finished um sekiro um and i got turned inside out like a you know like like a sock <laughs> basically by everything that i met in that game um and yeah so I, I started weathering and i was like oh the dodge iframes are actually quite similar to quite generous um and similar to how hi3 is played in the sense that uh they're it's like it's like not the same exact thing but I'm, what i'm saying is that when you dodge correctly there's there's benefits to uh combat and I, yeah, I keep on talking about dodging, but I really, really like the animation of when you're like, just, you dodge like just right. And then your character does like a cool like flip or like, and then weathering, I think they, they flash this like transparent color. I don't know. The whole thing is just very, very satisfying. And I found myself fighting. I'm going to sound like a fake fan, but I'm terrible with names, but there was, there's this boss and he's got like, he's like red and he like is like big and, um, and <laughs> I don't remember his name. Uh, he's kind of edgy, uh, and you meet him like in one of like the tacit fields. I think is uh, is the name of like the field with the uh, the, the markings on the floor. Um, and I just remember um, like I wasn't really thinking too much about it. I wasn't really ex I wasn't trying. I was trying not to pay attention to the story because I kind of wanted to fully enjoy it on release. And I did notice that um, some of the text like wasn't translated. Um, you know, uh, some of there was still a jankiness, but it is like you know a beta, so I wasn't I wasn't too worried about that. Um, so I basically sped through uh, what is like the dialogue and stuff like that. Um, and when I got there, it was like kind of the first time, even though you're low level, it's kind of like the first time you're really like uh, tested uh, to understand uh, how basic combat works uh and i also got turned inside out like a sock uh but uh 
you know, I beat it and I went back into it and I went back into it and I was like, oh, it's, it's really enjoyable. But yeah, I don't really have much to say about uh, Weathering Endgame because I actually ended up um, not really being able to get there. I did start the tower and I got as far as I could, um, but due to time constraint, yeah, I haven't really been able to um, experience like what the like what the big boy tower per, per, per part is. Uh, I only got through like the first two like baby levels before you get to like the big boy end game. Um, so I've watched a little bit of footage for it, but it looks really fun. So yeah, um, even though I've played the game technically, um, there's still way more for me to learn and explore. So um, that's why I'm anticipatory of uh, Weathering's release, which is soon. So I'm really excited for that. There are a lot of absolutely incredible looking gacha games on the horizon. And if I'm being honest here, we should be excited for all of them because at the end of the day, they'll all provide us something different. Hopefully a fun, unique experience. Oh, if you like, comment and subscribe, your gacha rate luck increases by 100%, 50% of the time.